Welcome back. We are here and we are going to do chapter two and it's titled God is Faithful. So before we begin, let's take a peek at our Catholic faith words. Actually, some of them aren't words, they're actually phrases. So uh, the first one is original sin. And that's the sin of our first parents, Adam and Eve. And, and Adam and Eve, of course, ate from the tree of knowledge when they weren't supposed to. And that led to the sinful condition of the entire human race. The next word, though, is a little bit more upbeat, and it's called salvation. And it's the loving action of God's forgiveness of sins and the restoration of friendship with him brought by Jesus. So Jesus came into the world for our salvation. So Jesus is undoing what Adam and Eve did. Let's take a peek. Okay, the next word is covenant. I know as fourth graders, you probably have heard this word before. And again, it's a sacred promise or it's an agreement between God and humans. So it's a covenant. And then the next Catholic faith word is faithful. And that means to be constant and loyal in your commitments. And it can be to God, it can be and to be it could be to others. So if you are faithful, but typically it's we use it in terms of being faithful to God. So I think that is it for the uh, Catholic faith words, and we're going to hear them as I read the lesson. So I want you to pay attention. So let's begin with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord of all faithful faithfulness, gather us as your people and keep us close to your heart. Faithful God, thank you for making us your own. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for giving us faith. Amen. And now I'm going to read to you a couple lines from Psalm 89. I will sing of your mercy forever, Lord. Proclaim your faithfulness through the ages. For I said, my mercy is established forever. My faithfulness will stand as long as the heavens. Okay, let's see. Julian? Julian, I don't think Miss Karen called on you in a long time. So do you think you can answer this question? How did God show his faithfulness to the very first human beings? Which were Adam and Eve. So Julian, can you tell us how God showed his faithfulness to Adam and Eve. Well, even though he kicked them out of the Garden of Eden, he did still provide them clothes and food and a ways of, of living outside the garden. So even though he was very angry with them, he did show his faithfulness. So let's see. How about Jackson? Jackson, I haven't called on you in a bit. Who are what helps you strengthen your faith in God? Now, I want all of this class to thinking about that. Who or what helps you strengthen your faith in God? All right. While you think about that, I'm going to read to you a scripture passage out of Hebrews chapter 10, and it's going to be verses 16 to 17. This is the covenant I will establish with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts. I will write them upon their minds. Their sins and their evil doing, I will remember no more. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. Okay, that's, that's a pretty deep thing. So let's get into the rest of the chapter to see if we can figure things out. Okay, we're going to go back to Adam and Eve, the first sin. <clears throat> for Adam and Eve, there was a time when every day was a good day. But one day, Satan, who is a fallen angel, who is God's enemy, came to Eve in the form of a snake and tempted her. We learn from the book of Genesis that Adam, what Adam and Eve did. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Together, the first five books of the Bible are, all call, are called the Pentateuch. Five books are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So now I'm going to read you um, an excerpt based on Genesis chapter 3. 
and it's it's in it's talking about being in the garden in the garden of eden was one special tree that god told adam and eve not to touch but satan convinced eve that if she and adam ate the fruit of that tree they could be no more like they could be more like god so here's satan telling even adam a, a lie adam and eve did as satan said but after they sinned, they felt ashamed. They learned how it felt to do something wrong. Everything got harder for Adam and Eve. God sent them away from the garden. They had to work to find food and shelter. From then on, jealousy, sadness, and fighting were in the world. So you can see how there were consequences for all of us because of what Adam and Eve chose to do. Humans were created to share God's life and be happy with God forever. By disobeying God, Adam and Eve broke their friendship with God. This is the first, this sin of our first parents is called original sin. Because ever since that choice was made, sin has been present throughout the world. Original sin affects every human being. The inclination to sin, suffering, and death all came into the world as a result of original sin. Even though God sent Adam and Eve away from the garden, he did not abandon them. He remained faithful and promised salvation. He wanted all humans to be free and faithful to him so they could be happy forever. The book of Genesis then tells another important story, the story of Noah. The point of Noah's story is that even when people continued to sin and disobey, God was still faithful. Okay, if you have the book, then I want you to do this little bubble, share your faith. Otherwise, the rest of us are going to go on. A sacred promise. What did God ask of and promise to Abram? A long After a long time, God called a man named Abram to help humans remain faithful. And we are going to read this story, and it's based on Genesis. The Lord called Abram, point, promising to bless him and make, him, make of him a great nation. Abram took his wife, Sarah, his brother's son, Lot, and their possessions on the long journey to the new land as God had directed. Abram and his family were never alone on their difficult journey. They knew that God was always with them. Every time Abram reached a stop on the journey, he built an altar of thanksgiving to the Lord. Many years later, after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan, the Lord spoke to him again and said, Don't be afraid. I will protect and reward you. Abram replied, Lord, you have given me everything I could ask for, except children. The Lord told Abram, look at the sky and count the stars. That's how many descendants you will have. God spoke to Abram again. God made a covenant with Abram and his descendants for all time. God told Abram, to your descendants I give this land. I am making you the father of a multitude of nations. The land of Canaan would belong to Abram and his descendants forever, and these people would be God's people. So here's a picture of Abram and his wife, Sarah. And I don't know, that must be Lot. Okay. So now we're going to talk about God's covenant with Abraham. God revealed his plan to Abram in a new way by making a covenant or a sacred promise or agreement with him. As a sign of the covenant, God changed the names of Abram and Sari to Abraham and Sarah. Soon after that, even though Sarah was old, she had a son whom the couple named Isaac. Abraham and Sarah never turned away from God. Like Abraham and Sarah, you are faithful to God every time you obey his laws and make loving choices. Abraham is considered an ancestor in faith of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. These religions see their origins in Abraham's free response to God's revelation that he was the one God. 
Abraham should believe in and follow. So if you have the book, because you're just joining us for a few weeks, I want you to go ahead and do this bubble called Connect Your Faith. And then the rest of the class, we're going to uh, talk about people of faith. And we're actually going to talk about St. Bridget of Sweden. St. Bridget was born to one of the wealthiest landowners in all of Sweden. In fact, her family was related to the king. Her parents made sure that she was taught religion. By the time she was seven, she was known to have religious dreams or visions of Jesus and the Holy Family. For an entire year, she prayed 15 Our Fathers and 15 Hail Marys every day, along with other prayers Jesus taught her to do. So here's a picture of St. Bridget. So that wouldn't take very long, would it, guys, to say 15 Our Fathers and 15 Hail Marys? Yeah. It'd almost be like saying a decade of the rosary. Okay, if you have the book, go ahead and do the Live Your Faith activity on page 69. Otherwise, we will end this lesson with a covenant prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God ever faithful, we gather, aware of your constant faithfulness to us. Thank you for your gift of faithfulness, O oh God. Help us to trust in you. We are your covenant people. God ever faithful, we are your covenant people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, everyone, be sure and take the quiz at the end of the chapter. If you are virtual uh, full-time, then I want you to email that um, quiz to me. And if you have the book and are just joining us because we went... Uh, remote for a month, then I want you to do it in your book because we will be looking at your quizzes when you come back next week. All right, stay safe, stay warm, and God bless you.